Hello and welcome back to This Little Wonderful Life. I'm walking to the shops and I recorded a whole introduction on my walk but it was completely out of focus. So a voiceover it is. This vlog is going to be a big old reading catch up. Prepare yourselves with some cooking thrown in at the end as well. So I finished The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab whilst I was on my walk. It was wonderful. I'll talk about it in more detail later. And now I'm starting my next one. And I stopped in a couple of charity shops. Didn't buy anything this time, but had a good browse. Okay, I am back from my walk. I've positioned myself here so it's a bit different to where I sit when I do my knitting and crochet podcasts. Because when I film those for my other channel... I sit just down here on the sofa, which I'm now currently perched on the side of. And I wanted it to feel a bit different for me and for you. So I'm sort of perched on the side and you can see like one of our shelving things, bookcases behind us. And then I realized it's a bit of a mess, but then I couldn't be bothered to do anything about it. So I need to sort, actually I need to make a vlog about that. I want to sort this whole um, situation out. It looks pretty and I really like it but actually some of the books on here don't deserve a place here so I was going to do a bit of a tidy up of books get rid of some of the books that I don't want to keep and maybe talk about my the ones on here that I absolutely love and adore because a lot of these are very much loved books um, I'm not a big rereader but I'm beginning to feel like I might want I've had a, I've been having a chat with my sister who's a huge rereader she loves rereading books and from watching more booktube videos and so on um a lot of people reread and i'm beginning to get that urge to maybe revisit books that have lived so um comfortably in my memory for so many years it makes me a bit scared to do it though but um yes yeah, so i will do a vlog about that in the future uh, but i'm going to catch you up on all the books i've been listening and reading to uh so i've got my story graph here i've just checked and the last time i spoke to you about books I had just started reading with my eyeballs the Delegate Dream department store and listening with my ears to Tidelands by Philippa Gregory. So we'll pick up there and I'll go through my story graph and I will go in order of what I finished. A um, little bit of a disclaimer to begin with. Obviously, um, these are just my thoughts and opinions on books that I've read and listened to and whether I've enjoyed them or not enjoyed them or both at the same time. It's such a personal thing. It's like music. Everybody's tastes are so different. So if I've um, not enjoyed a book that you've loved, it doesn't take away from that book at all. It's just my loss. Um, I strongly believe that if I don't get something and I don't get the enjoyment out of it, then that is my my loss and mine alone. And uh, likewise, I might talk about books that I absolutely loved and you might think I'm absolutely mad for loving them. <laughs> but it's just still fun to talk about, isn't it? So uh, yeah, with that out of the way, I'm gonna take a sip of my Diet Coke. I have rehydrated properly. And I've had some lunch as well. And I've tried to sort out my mad hair a bit. But um, this is just how I look today. <laughs> okay, Tidelands was the first, th uh, first thing I finished on audio. It was okay. I gave it four stars. I thought it was really well, well written. The writing was good. It's essentially, uh, it's, it's historical fiction. And historical fiction is something I've this year discovered I really enjoy, having read the six... Tudor Wives uh, series by Alison Weir on audio and absolutely loving them. I, I just found them so interesting. I, I loved uh, reading something set in historical times. And Philippa Gregory is another um, historian slash author. And so she, she seemed like an obvious choice to you know explore other authors in historical fiction. Um, I enjoyed it. I didn't enjoy the writing as much as I enjoyed Alison Weir's writing, uh, but I wasn't listening to it to compare. Um, the story felt bleak. Uh, it's set in the 1600s, so it's kind of a bleak time in history. It's about a woman who uh, it, her husband is missing and she's you know, barely scraping by, you know, trying to you know, put food on the table for her and her two children. She, her brother lives in the same uh, village where they live. It's a fishing village, really, on the edge, right on the edge of the coast in Britain. And um, one night she is in the uh, churchyard um, and she meets a stranger. And it's kind of their story of falling in love, really. But I, 
I wasn't bought into the love story. It just seemed very sudden and then they both the both characters for me at certain points behaved in ways that didn't seem expected for their types of character um and that took me out of the story a bit yeah but i did enjoy it and i enjoyed it enough to give it four stars so yeah that was tidelands uh, let me know if you have an opinion on historical fiction authors or if you have any favorites because i would be really interested to discover more authors I'm definitely going to read more um, by Alison Weir and I will probably give more by Philippa Gregory a go. So again, any recommendations, any favourites, let me know. After that, I moved on and listened to another audiobook uh, and that was The Mystery Guest. Uh, it's the second in the Molly, Molly the Maid uh, series by Nita Prose. I listened to the first book last year and I loved it. Uh, Molly the Maid is a is a fantastic character. She's uh, neurodiverse. She's been brought up by her gran, who has recently died. She's she's she her gran's a big character in the books, but she's never alive in the books. Her you in the first book, she's already died, but she refers back to things, conversations that she's had with her gran, the things that her gran has taught her over the years. Um, and so on and you know how she's come to become a maid and it's really interesting so the first book centered around a death that had happened uh, at the, the hotel where Molly the maid works and the second book um, continues in a similar way in that they have an author coming to speak at the hotel and he dies uh, does he die whilst giving his speech I think he might I think he might die on stage can't quite remember but it's right at the beginning of the book that's not a spoiler that's the murder and uh, then the police come in to investigate and Molly's sort of unwittingly involved in this and at the same time she's looking back at things that have happened with other characters within the the novel that are connected and it's just lovely the the, the, the woman that narrates it um can I see her name on here oh Lauren Ambrose is the name of the narrator. She does it brilliantly. She's got the perfect kind of lilt and uh, speed to the way she speaks. It just suits the Molly the Maid character so well. She has a really good differentiation of the voices for the different characters and I just loved it. I thought the mystery was good. It kept me guessing. Uh, it was funny. It was sweet, it was sad, it was touching, and I hope there's going to be more of the Morning the Maid um, uh, books because I think they're fantastic. Uh, the next one I finished after that was another audiobook, which I think I found on Everand. I subscribed to Everand. So for my audiobooks, I um, subscribe to Audible. I also subscribe to Everand, and I also use Libby and Borrowbox, which are two library apps, and they're free. Um, and this was on Everand and it was Mrs. D is going without by Lotta Dan and this is a biography would it be called a biography if it's yeah non-fiction biography stroke memoir um, and it is about the wife of a, a newsreader famous newsreader in, in Australia she started keeping a blog about how she had decided to give up drinking wine it was becoming out of control for her and she just decided in her late 30s, just before her 40th birthday, to stop drinking altogether. And she documented the process and the sort of highs and lows of that on a blog, which later became this book. I'm very sober curious because, as, as you know, if you watch this channel, I love my, my, uh, my frizzanti and my white wine. I really, really do. I love it. But I also really love my hot milk and a biscuit. I love the nights when I don't have alcohol. I love the nights when I do. And um, I don't feel I have an unhealthy relationship with it, but I don't know how many people wonder what life might be like if you just chose not to drink at all. Like, so if you went out for to the pub with friends or something that you just had Diet Coke all evening, I know a lot of people watching will already do that because you're, you're non-drinkers, but um, I just find it a really interesting topic and it's something that I like to read about occasionally so when I saw that I listened to it and I really really enjoyed it it was really really um funny it was uh, really really honest and I think she's done another one called Mrs D is going within 
which I assume is about well-being or something, but I would like to listen to that. I'd listen to um, more uh, by this author, and I'm pretty sure I saw on her Instagram that she might even be writing another one about sugar, like addiction to sugar. I'd be really interested in that one because I definitely have a sugar issue. Um, so yeah, really enjoyed that. Gave it four and a half stars. Oh, mist uh, the mystery guest, by the way, the Molly the Maid one, I gave five stars, in case you hadn't guessed by my gushing about it. Uh, I then finished the Dalagut Dream Department Store. So this was a birthday present from my eldest daughter, Lilia. She wants to read this after me. Uh, it says the dream you ordered is sold out. This was really, really weird. It's by Mai Lee, translated by Sandy Dewson Lee. Um, and what it says is, day and night, visitors, both human and animal, from all over the world, shuffle in sleepily in their pyjamas, lining up to purchase their latest adventure. Each floor in the department store sells a special kind of dream catered for each client. Uh, la 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 la, there is never a dull moment thanks to the curious, funny and strange clientele that regularly visit the store. Follow along with Penny as she uncovers the workings of this wonderfully whimsical world. Um, <laughs> this read like a children's book for adults if that makes sense it felt like a fairy tale written for adults uh, and it also felt more like a kind of collection of short stories told in just told <laughs> i can't describe it it didn't feel like one cohesive story from beginning to end there was no kind of character arcs or anything like that it felt like there was a new employee started at the department store she learned about the job and in the process you had other little stories going on about people coming in to order dreams <laughs> it was weird i enjoyed it i had a good time reading it and i read it quite quickly i gave it three stars would i read it again no would i recommend it probably not but i'm really glad i read it i enjoyed it and the cover is epic Uh, okay, then I uh, listened to Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. I gave this five stars. It was fantastic. It's about um, Tova, who is a cleaner at an aquarium. So you get her point of view, but you also get the point of view of... Oh, God, it doesn't say in the uh, description of it, but there's another... So, so you get the point of view of Tova, you get the point of view of Marcellus, who is the giant Pacific octopus that lives at the aquarium where Tova is a cleaner. But you also get the perspective of another character, a young male character, and it doesn't say what his name is and I can't remember. Anyway, so you get three perspectives. Undoubtedly, the best perspective is Marcellus, the octopus. There's one bit where he's describing his name. Like the na his name is Marcellus. He was named by like the aquarium owner's young daughter or something. And, but his full name is something like Marcellus something, something squiddy legs or something. And he says, it is a preposterous name. <laughs> Just, it, the, the guy that did the narration for Marcellus was so, so good. It reminded me of John Malkovich, his voice. And uh, the lady that did the narration for the rest of the book was really, really good as well. She couldn't do a Scottish accent. One of the characters is Scottish. But it didn't really matter. She did a good job. But yeah, it was really good. It's a very, very gentle, thought-provoking and touching novel uh, about loss and grief and uh, families and friendship and new beginnings and found family in more than one sense and octopus. <laughs> Octopuses. I should say. Yeah, I would highly recommend it. The next book that I finished, this is quite exciting, was The Day Shelley Woodhouse Woke Up by Laura, Laura Pearson. Laura Pearson is an author that writes issues-based fiction. So the, 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 the novels she writes centre around a particular issue. And the day that Shelley Wode, Wodehouse? Woodhouse w w woke up is... Uh, it's one of those things where I get a bit annoyed with publishers and their uh, and the way they market things and sell things. This is the cover of the book. The book is entirely about domestic violence. It's really well written. It's 
very thought provoking. It's obviously, it, I mean, I don't know much about this topic, but it felt to me like it was very well handled. But this cover doesn't project that. It looks, it makes it look a lot fluffier than it is. Um, and even the description doesn't give anything away about that. I don't know, having not had a hard copy, I don't know if there's content warnings within it, the book itself. But yeah, it is very much about domestic violence. Hello, darling. Hello. Why are you talking about domestic violence? I'm talking about books. Oh, this nice. Why are you talking about domestic violence? Because one of the books I read was about domestic violence. Oh. Lily, Lilia's here. She's looking absolutely lovely. <laughs> she just said, as usual. And I'm sure she has lots of books to tell you about, but she's on her way out with friends. She's finished her sixth one college and she is as free as a bird right now. Her last summer before she goes off to university. Um, and the reason that I was very excited about reading the, the day Shelley Wode, Wode House, Woodhouse, why do I keep saying Wodehouse? Uh, woke up is because I read it in a new format. I read it with my eyes. But I read it on my new favourite thing. I said I never would do this. But this here, my friends, is a Kindle. I got the most basic one that I could find. It was £94 without adverts. It's a Kindle 11th generation 2022 release, in case you're interested. I'll, I'll put a link underneath. And I don't entirely understand yet how to use it. Um, properly. Uh, I find sometimes that the Amazon user function is a little bit clunky and not very um, intuitive, but I flew through that book and I have flown through every book that I've read on this thing since because it's got this fantastic um, function where you can see at the bottom the estimated time left for the reading of the book. And I, I I love that. It really, really, really motivates me to read. I just, I, I just love it. Love it so much. So, um, it was a completely new format. I read it in about two days flat. I gave it, what did I give it? I gave it four stars. I, I, I thought it was a really good book and yeah, it was all wrapped up very nicely as well. I then listened to one of my favourite books of all time. In fact, probably my number one favourite book of all time, which is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I first read this book when I was, I must have been in my 20s, early 20s, because I remember I read it and loved it so much and then I just, I couldn't bear to leave the characters behind. So straight away, I read The Air Affair by Jasper Ford, so I could go back and spend time with Jane and Mr Rochester. Um, and that was published in the early 2000s. So I must have read uh, Jane Eyre for the first time in my early 20s and I just remember loving the character of Jane, loving the relationship that she has with Mr Rochester because for the time it was written I just felt like the dialogue between them was so witty and bold and I just, I just, and it was just brilliant. I just loved the, the, their relationship but also everyone that's awful gets their comeuppance so it felt satisfying the whole way through. Um, there are many reasons I could talk about why I love Jane Eyre, but I just loved it. So I listened to it. I fancied uh, a bit of a reread and I wanted to listen to it on audio for the first time. There were two versions available as part of my Audible membership. And uh, I chose, there's one read by Thandi Newton and one read by uh, Julia Stevenson. Uh, I chose the one by Julia Stevenson and she did a fantastic job. I loved it, gave it five stars again. Fantastic. I then read on my new best friend, my Kindle, Strange Sally Diamond by Liz Nugent. I was hooked on this, absolutely hooked. And I, I loved it. I did not like the ending though. I was most cross about the ending. So the story of, of Strange Sally Diamond, it, the, 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 the beginning of it is brilliant. She basically, um, her dad dies and he's always said to uh, her, Sally, uh, when I die I can't be bothered with anything, just put my body out with the bins. So that's exactly what she does, she puts him out where they incinerate the rubbish and tries to incinerate him. <laughs> so, and that happens right at the beginning of the book, which is how 
uh, she kind of it comes to people's attention that he's died and then she has some family friends that help her to navigate what her dad had wanted her to know after his death and so on and you you get the story of why she is as she is she doesn't know either because she doesn't have any memories from before she is six or seven years old um so you oh, i don't want to give too much away because it was quite a surprise when i found out what had happened to her before then so i won't say too much but if you've read the book room um there were similar themes in this uh, that run all the way through the book it's very dark there's a lot of content warnings for this one so do make sure that you check those but I loved it. The writing was fantastic. I couldn't put it down. Again, I think I read it in about two days flat. Uh, but I was just so, I was just, few, if, you, if you've read it and you were fuming at the end, and I know that it was a fairly realistic ending and, you know, you're supposed to be left wondering and thinking and questioning what happened. But if you've read it, without spoilers in the comments, just let me know your thought, your um, reaction to the ending of Strange Sally Diamond. But I loved it and I gave it, I haven't given it, but I'm probably gonna give it, I would say four and a half stars. And that takes us right up to date. Got a few more to go yet, but I just finished, what you saw me just at the beginning of the vlog as I was walking, I just finished The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab and I didn't know what to expect from this book. I hardly knew anything about it. It was available on Libby so I listened to it and I think it's probably one of the best books I've um, listened to or read in, a, in my life. I just, I loved it so much. It's kind of fantasy, romance, historical fiction, uh, a little bit sci-fi I don't I can't describe it Addie LaRue basically makes a deal with a devil type character right at the beginning of the book and um is therefore lives with a curse and she lives through centuries she has uh immortality but it comes at a price and that price is that once uh, she meets anyone if they leave the room and she's out of sight for any amount of time when they come back they can't remember her. So she has complete freedom from relationships with people or having anyone to have expectations of her because nobody ever rem remembers her. She cannot say her name and she cannot leave a mark on the world. Um, and all the way through the centuries that she's going through this, she's always got contact with the, uh, the darkness, as she calls him. She gives him a name, Luke, who had cursed her to begin with. He comes in and out of her life trying to persuade her to give up her her soul and give up and so on. So she has a bit of a relationship with him. And then, and this is from the back cover, so this is not a spoiler, at one point she meets someone and the curse doesn't seem to have the same effect on him as it does to everybody else. And that, so you get these kind of three, three main characters, which is Addie, which is Luke, the darkness, and which is Henry, the boy she meets. And I just loved it. It, it, it was so well written. The dialogue was brilliant. It was mysterious. It was sweet. It was historical. It was informative. It was everything. And even right up to the ending, because I start to get scared towards the end of such a good book. I'm thinking, oh, here we go. We're getting near the end. It's going to get ruined. <laughs> They're going to ruin it with the ending. But the ending was just perfect. I loved it. It was fantastic. I want to read everything that they've written now to see what it's like so yeah it was a really really good book to finish this morning and then straight after that because it was also available on Libby on the library I started Cleopatra and Frankenstein um so far not sure about that I'm only about uh you're looking at me Lilia do you know the book Cleopatra and Frankenstein what's the opinion at work Lilia works in a bookshop there isn't one just been based out in fiction for like five years and then we're buying it. Oh, she said, <laughs> there's no real opinions at work, but it's been on face out in the fiction section for ever and no one buys it. <laughs> it was quite, it seemed to be everywhere for a while. But Is it? Yeah, anyway. Um, my current read that I have not finished, well, I kind of have four. So let me grab them. 
actually one of them I don't have. So I've got two poetry books on the go. One is Poems by uh, Len Penny, uh, which I'm slowly working my way through and making notes and so on. And then I ordered uh, a book of poetry, the latest book of poetry from Harry Baker, who I follow on Instagram. I follow quite a few poets on Instagram. But Harry Baker, if you can look him up, is wonderful. He's a British poet. He lives, he's from Margate in Kent. So he's a Kentish boy. And this is his latest book, Wonderful. And if you go onto his Instagram, you will see him uh, talking, uh, performing his poetry live. And um, I think that is the best way to experience it. It's fantastic. So I'm slowly making my way through this, but I've decided I'm not going to be able to read this without making notes so I'm going to go through and uh, read it with a pencil. With poetry books, I, that I read them very slowly. I dip in and out. I go backwards, forwards. I read them in a very different way than I would read a novel. So, But yeah, this is quite literally wonderful. Fantastic poems. Um, and a really lovely person to follow on Instagram. My current eyeball book is The Cat Who Saved Books by Sosuke Nas Natsukawa. This beautiful cover and it's I'm enjoying it the idea of it is fantastic I am really enjoying the different issues that it brings up about how we read and how we treat books and the reasons why we love books um, I have highlighted a few bits actually which I don't normally do and tabbed a few bits Lily is like raising her eyebrows at me. I've used the highlighting tape. Wow. Yeah, it's quite exciting. So I've, this bit, I said, you finished, you're finished after reading them once. You don't want to reread. That made me question my rereading. That was one of the things I, that made me question my lack of rereading. You're a rereader. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, you do reread, don't you? And then the other thing that I um, highlighted was another quote, which is, this isn't a library for holding your precious books. They're for showing off whatever books you manage to get your hands on. The whole place is nothing but a showroom. People who truly love books don't treat them this way. Uh, so I'm about three quarters of the way for, um, through this. I'm just struggling with it. I'm finding it's really, I'm finding it a bit of a slog. I think I just need to sit down and have, because I read at night and I, I, perhaps it's just not the right kind of book for me to be reading at night. It's not capturing my attention enough. I was up late into the night reading Sally Diamond. I couldn't put it down, but I just don't feel the same about this one. But it is very cute. It's very sweet. I'm enjoying it. And uh, I'm, yeah, I cannot complain. I am enjoying it. And at the same time, <laughs> I started the bot. This is a library copy. I started The Botanist Daughter by... Katie Nunn. Look at that cover. It's so pretty, the cover. I started it on audio. It's narrated by Caroline Lee, who's a narrator I really, really like. She narrated um, the Leanne Moriarty book, Big, Big Little Lies, Big Pretty Little Big Little Lies, I think it was called, and I really enjoyed it. She did a fantastic job of narrating that. However, I wasn't enjoying her narration of this. It was just really not right for me. It felt, this feels like a very gentle story. Um, and the narration I felt was too harsh. I'll read you the blurb. It says, a buried secret. Present day, Anna is growing her gardening business and renovating her late grandmother's house. When she discovers a, hidden, a box hidden in a wall cavity containing watercolours of exotic plants, an old diary and a handful of seeds, she is thrust into a centuries-old mystery, one that sends her halfway across the world to Kew Gardens and then on to Cornwall in search of the truth. A lady adventurer, 1886. Elizabeth Trepithick, Tre Trebith, Trebithick is determined to fulfil her father's dying wish and continue his life's work as an adventurer and plant hunter. When she embarks on a perilous journey to discover a rare and miraculous flower, she discovers that ultimate betrayal can be found even across the seas. Two women separated by centuries. Can a mysterious flower bring them together? It just sounds lovely. And the reason I'm reading this is I'm doing it as a buddy read with some um, friends. So um, I wouldn't have... I hadn't heard of it, but one of my friends recommended it and said, why don't we read with this, this one? And we were all like, yes, let's do it. So I'm really looking forward to starting again from the beginning, but with my eyes. But I've got to finish this one first. I'm really, really talking a lot more than I expected to talk. 
I apologise. I hope that you quite enjoy a long chat about books because that's what you've got. <laughs> there was a couple of other things I wanted to mention. First of all, for my Kindle, I got a cover. This isn't an official um, Kindle cover. It was just like a £6 one, which I also got on Amazon. And it's perfect. It opens up the screen and closes down the screen when you do it. And it's really comfortable to hold. However, it doesn't have a clear back. And I wanted to put a sticker on. Uh, so I did manage to find one that had a clear back and a flappy front. <laughs> for want of a better expression. Uh, but I didn't. it didn't sit nicely. I had to send it back, I didn't like it. So I got myself just a normal, um, plain, clear cover. But then I worry about the um, front getting scratched or damaged. And I suppose I could make myself a little pouch to keep it in, but I also just like the fact that I can just pick this up and it's ready to go. I can shove it in my bag and so on. But I've got this, I've got this anyway. It was only a few quid, so I've got that ready to go. And then, well, because I was so excited about my new Kindle, I also treated myself to um, the most fabulous uh, sticker to go on it. So if I had a clear back, I could put it on, but I don't. Oh, all the little extra as well. So this is from a UK small business on Etsy. She's called Dev C. Uh, I'm going to hold it up because there's a QR code that you can scan. So hopefully you'll be able to do that on the screen. Uh, she is Deb C on Etsy though. I will link her underneath. And she does uh, lovely stickers and things. And I ordered this. Emotional support Kindle. <laughs> and look, this is the little extra freebie she put in as well. How cute is that? Oh. So I'm going to put both of those. I might just stick it directly onto the Kindle because I love them so much. Also something else bookish that I ordered were some bookmarks. I got a set of four and I chose the four that I wanted. Lilia has one of them over there. Maybe she'll pass hers to me. And these are the new, some of the new bookmark designs from What Victoria Read, one of my favourite YouTubers. Her channel is all about books and she is a charity channel. So everything, all the money she makes and the money she makes from the sale of her bookmarks go to charity. Um, so I bought, <laughs> I'm in my historical fiction era, which I think we can safely say I've demonstrated in the last half hour of talking about books. I love that. I love that image. I really wish I'd also got, I'm in my classics era. There's a classics one as well but I can always go and buy more. I'm in my dark academia era, I got as well. It's very disconcerting vlogging with a teenager behind the camera because she keeps rolling her eyes at me in disdain. I'm in my reading era. Does that get an eye roll? No, okay. And Lilia has hers over there, which she's apparently not passing to me. Do you want to pass me I'm in my romance era? Because Lilia is in her, ro well, she's permanently in her romance era. So I got this one for Lilia. There we go, you can now use it. <laughs> uh, so they're from Victoria. I will link her Etsy shop underneath. Like I say, all the money goes to charity. Uh, yeah, so those are all my bookish things. Oh, one more thing, one more thing. I've got one more book I'm going to show you later as well. Um, I saw this in the supermarket and I had to buy it. Ralph's Party by Lisa Jewell. Ralph's Party, I love this. I read it in the, I must have read it in the noughties. When was it published? 1999 it was published. I would have read it when it came out and I loved it. And this is a sort of anniversary edition. I think, yeah, 25 years since it was published. Uh, and it's got an introduction from Lisa Jewell as well. So I had to have this edition. I don't have my original one. It would have been given away years ago. But um, yeah, I loved Ralph's Party. It stayed with me for years and years and years. I intend to reread it. I haven't read the new introduction yet. But yeah, I'm very excited to have this. And it's a really pretty copy as well. The original one wasn't pink. Right, I'm going to stop blethering, tidy up, do a bit of editing. Say goodbye to Lilia. And then hopefully we'll still have time for you, me to share with you one more book, a cookbook, and then show you what I'm making from it.
Well, it's post dinner. Uh, it's quarter to six now. Dan's just rummaging in the freezer for an ice lolly. What are you having, Dan? No, a twister. A twister. I might have one of those. I'll have a twister. And I just wanted to finish off with showing you the book um, that I've just been using. I got this um, after I went up to Shropshire, <laughs> Shropshire to do some yarn dyeing with Kelly and Nick at Le Family Yarn. There's a vlog all about that on my other channel. I'll link it underneath. And when I was sitting chatting with Kelly at her house, she had bought some secondhand books, one of which was this one. And I was going through it going, oh, that looks nice, that looks nice. And I took a couple of photos of recipes, naughty, and made them when I got home. Absolutely loved them and went straight out and bought the book. Um, don't be fooled by the title, The Slimming Foodie. Um, it's Pip Payne is the person behind the books. These do not in any, th these are healthy recipes with really hearty portions. I have just made the beefaroni, that's what you just saw me making, which is a recipe for four people. And Dan had second helpings, I had a large helping, Phoebe had a large helping, and there's still enough for at least three really good sized portions in there. Um, it is just a really good cookbook filled with recipes. Everything filled with, obviously it's a cookbook filled with recipes. <laughs> What I mean is it's recipes that have really, really worked. We've all loved them and the kids have loved them. We've had sweet and sour pork. We've had chicken dishes. We've had veggie dishes. We've had uh, the beefaroni. We've had frittata. Uh, we've, had, uh, we've had so many things from this and every one of them has turned out brilliantly. So I'll link it underneath um, for you to have a look at but honestly i cannot recommend this highly enough we've eaten healthily we've eaten well it contributes to our five a day and i'm just so glad that kelly had bought the book and uh, that i saw it because yeah really really lovely oh there was another recipe in here i'm obsessed slightly obsessed with um jalapeno poppers that you get from uh, papa john's which is like little jalapenos deep fried in breadcrumbs um, with cream cheese in and they've got a courgette jalapeno popper recipe in here so it's like a cut up courgette which you stuff with cream cheese and chopped up jalapenos oh my goodness it was delicious oh it was just lovely and on that note i'm feeling hungry again already i've only just finished my dinner i'm like mm, jalapeno courgette um, thank you for joining me for this long chat about books. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comments um, if you've read any of the books that I've been chatting about, if you want to read any of the books I've been chatting about, if you've got any recommendations at all for what you've been reading, especially historical fiction or anything the likes of uh, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, uh, and tell me what you've been cooking, what cookbooks you've been using or what internet recipes, and I will see you again very soon, Dan and I are going for a walk in a week. We're going to do one of our coastal walks. Uh, there are quite a few uh, coastal like walk videos on this channel. In fact, I did a bit of a spring clean and I've done some playlists. So if you go to the front page of my channel, you'll see quite a long playlist of all the videos I've made over the past however many years about books. And there's quite there's a lot more than I expected. And all the um, videos I've made about walking and particular walking trails as well so it's all easy to find so I would recommend you go and have a look at the front page of my channel because it's all looking spick and span and clean and tidy <laughs> and I'll see you again uh, for the walking vlog I'm really looking forward to it we're going to walk from Deal I think to Sandwich and yeah I'm going to film it and take you along with me so I'll see you then bye <laughs>